Hi, Achim here from Inner Space Explorers. Today we talk about gas mixing, or actually the setup for gas mixing, and the reason for that is I just recently um, joined a gas mixing session and I found it super scary and I was very unhappy with this. And um, so I thought it's a, it's a good uh, topic for a video. And um, I will not in detail talk about how to mix gas, it's more the setup and this will be one of these super controversial videos and a lot of people will say, I know this is complete crap, doesn't matter, um, this is how I do it for more than 30 years and uh, as always I can explain to you why I do it the way I'm doing it. So if you like my content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and uh, hit that little notification bell so you get an update uh, when I upload new content, which is normally once a week. All right, talking about gas mixing. So I just set it up here roughly with an oxygen tank. So it really doesn't matter if it's oxygen or helium or whatever. Um, it's more about the equipment. Um, so what, what we have here is a 300 bar oxygen bottle, 50 liters and uh, the fill whip and um, as an example I have a small oxygen bottle here from a rebreather and um, what you see in the background is my mixing box so this is an old um, uh, digital gauge that uh, originally was connected uh, through a cable with the fill whip this is broken at some point I just didn't take it out so I always have a, um, a control SPG here uh, obviously a pen I have a couple of adapters for this is helium, this is oxygen, this is uh, for my Gregory breather and then a, a couple of tools to open these tanks, uh, some tape, etc. So uh, basically the, the tools, you need everything nice in one, uh, one case, um, but that's just uh, to show you the way I do it. So what we have here is, as I said, a 50, uh, 50 liter 300 bar bottle and uh, there comes an adapter, um, obviously, for um, the DIN uh, connector of the fill whip. So depending on where you are, that might be bullnose or something else. I've also seen some sort of quick connectors from industrial uh, material. But uh, I have these DIN connectors here. I can actually just show that to you. So uh, basically the same that you have on your regulator. And uh, this is the adapter from the oxygen 300 bar to this um, DIN connector. And then, and that's a big difference to a lot of equipment that I see, I have my needle valve. And in most fill whips that I see, there's no needle valve here, it's just the hose. And then the needle valve is somewhere down here. And uh, this uh, gas mixing session that I saw recently, it had, didn't have any needle valves at all. And that I think is pretty scary, especially uh, when, you, when you handle high pressure oxygen with helium, it doesn't matter. So the gas comes just this small portion here, which is all solid metal. So there's no hose in between to my needle valve, which is closed in the beginning. Then I have a little filter here. Then I have this steel braided hose, it comes all the way here. And then I have my digital pressure gauge. Um, there's actually a one-way uh, one valve here, and then I have the second DIN connector, and then I have the bottle I want to fill. So the reason I set it up this way is I don't want the pressure to run all the way through my hose with this relatively uncontrollable valve on the cylinder. And I mean, there's another one on every cylinder you buy. There might be old ones, worn out ones, new ones, whatever, but this is really hard to control. and that's. Also the reason why it is a complete no-go to fill high pressure oxygen and controlling the flow with the valve from the tank. This is just unsafe practice. So I don't want this pressure blow or whatever you want to call it goes through all the holes and then to the tank. So because I don't want it in the tank, this is the most vulnerable part. And if there's anything in that, um, in that tank or in that hose that's not good, fat, grease, whatever, there's always a chance of a, of a problem, right? So I want this in this sturdy material and I want this, this pressure blow only to go from the valve to the needle valve and then I can control it. I control the flow. And the thing is that I have a gas expansion from here on, which means the gas cools down, which is also good, right? 
So we go down here, there's my bleeding valve. So I close this, um, it's switched on, it shows zero bar. And then I open the tank that I want to fill and I open it all the way because I don't want the restriction where the gas has to go through that restriction because this is where it will heat up and it will speed up and this can cause problems as well. So this shows it has 67.9 bars, so 68 bars. So my needle valve is closed, so this one is already filled with gas now, um, right? So um, yeah, accidentally I said there's a one-way valve, there's no one-way valve here, there is a filter in here, a second one, so I have two filters in here. So this one's closed and now I open this one and I open this one just like a quarter turn or something because if the shit hits the fan I want to be able to close this as fast as possible right so this is all I need Zack, this is close it's done so just a quarter turn open and now I can control the flow with my needle valve and this is as I said super controlled and you, you, you see how this starts to raise now it's 85, 86, 88, 89 right so this is super slow filling and I control this with my needle valve, right? There's also, you, you hear the gas flow, and you're probably not through that camera, um, but that's the, the best way to control the gas flow. So the point is not to fill this tank now. Um, so I close my needle valve. I close this one all the way. And now I'm bleeding my, uh, my fill hose. And this is a, again why a lot of people say, now I want my control valve here because they say they only lose the amount of gas that is inside here. If that's the issue, get another hobby. So the amount of gas that you have in this small hose, I mean, the inner diameter of this hose is three millimeter. That's, forget that. that it's not worth thinking about it. Even if it's expensive helium, that's nothing. So. I open this one. Oh, this is closed, this is closed. So now the hose is empty. And now this one's closed and I can... And I just do it that way because I want to show you how much control I have. You hear that. It's very... Even this, the little bit of gas that's inside this connection here. gives you a good idea of how controllable this is with this needle valve. So this is the setup I use. Um, in my opinion, the safest way of doing it. And uh, another thing I want to show you is, I have always a little bit of tape on this, um, on this big tank, which says oxygen once more, and then it shows my initial pressure. And then I always write down what I have left in the tank. So when I come and I have usually a few of these tanks, I know where I have the highest pressure. So this one started with 292. 271, 235, 196, etc., etc. And what I always do is with these tanks, I analyze them. As stupid as it may sound, but I had oxygen tanks that were like 90% and there was probably air in them, so I had to return them. And I had helium tanks with 16% oxygen. And that's scary because if you want to mix like a 1080 or something, and you mix with <laughs> pure helium that has 60% of oxygen, you will never ever come to a reasonable um, Result. So always analyze the gas that you get delivered. I know a lot of people don't do that, uh, which I always get as feedback when I'm teaching these classes. And I was like, what? What are you doing? So for me, that proved to be um, valuable. And as I said, over the years, I had two uh, tanks that uh, didn't have the, the gas they should contain. So it's all, all human work. So there's always room for error. And uh, that's why I always analyze these as well. All right. If you have questions, comments, put them in the comment section. I'm super curious to see what uh, people argue about these filling whips and I know there will be a lot of arguments if you want to discuss it a bit more in detail check out my patron site that's where I normally is a bit more in detail and I have more time to answer questions other than that stay safe see you in the next video bye bye